Alien Isolation is a first-person survival horror game based in the world of Alien and follows Ellen Ripley's daughter Amanda as she travels to the Sevastopol station to recover the flight recorder from a missing mother's spaceship. Atmosphere from the early game, the Alien Isolation deals out a tremendous amount of apprehension, well before anything even happens. The iconic nervous horns and flutes that help bring tension to the original 1979 film make their return, as well as the dazzling interior to the Torrens which brings the film to life right in front of you, and it's just fun to explore, even if vaguely eerie. Once aboard Sevastopol Station, the game changes radically and the eeriness gives way to paranoia and tension as you hear things crashing in the distance and see all the damage and things sprayed on the walls of the station. Anarchy rules here. Despite being provided with weapons, you still somehow feel incredibly vulnerable. Even against other humans, there's no way you're going to rambo your way through the game with gunfights ending swiftly and rarely in your favour. Using weapons against the alien is all but a waste of time. Even the flamethrower acts only as a deterrent and the xenomorph can easily shrug that off at random. The game makes the alien feel like what it is. An unstoppable killing machine that you are literally no match for. It goes without saying that with the staggering number of ways the alien can both outmaneuver and seemingly outsmart you, all alien isolation needs to do to crank the atmosphere up is imply that the alien is in the area. It proves time and time again that nowhere is safe with it being able to sense that you're hiding in a cupboard or coming after you in a vent. It lays traps and can snatch you up in air ducts and if you can't careful, it can kill you as you save the game. It can happen at any time, which makes the game absolutely nerve shattering. There are next to no safe moments in this game. It also helps that the game is incredibly immersive thanks to its sound design and sprawling but realistic environments. Sevastopol Station feels incomprehensibly large and you feel insignificantly small when compared to its giant machinery and complex systems of vents and corridors. Alien Isolation is a stressful game, where one mistake can get you killed. That's one Harry Mason. Samuels, listen to me. It's not safe here. Siegson's got this place locked tight. Their goddamn androids are killing people! That's impossible. It's contrary to primary synthetic programming. I've seen it, Samuels. I guess Siegson's got a different idea about synthetics. And there's something else here. A creature. It's big and it's lethal. Ripley, slow down. A creature? It's a life form. A, an unknown type. Some kind of alien organism. It's extremely dangerous. You and Taylor Ripley, need to make- Taylor is hurt. She was injured by debris during the crossing. How bad? I can't move her. I need medical supplies. We need to treat and pack the And injury. the Torrens? The radio is broken. I can't contact Verlaine. We're on our own. Shit! Scares. Despite being a very long game by horror game standards, Alien Isolation doesn't really try a lot of things, but it doesn't really need to. With tension as high as this, it only takes one or two things to push you over that edge. The obvious scares come from the alien itself, its frankly incredibly programmed AI allows it to feel like a real entity, making decisions on the fly and tricking you into thinking you're safe. Its ability to kill you can't be understated with it dragging you out from underneath tables to eat your face, as well as all the methods mentioned before. It's always a surprise and catches you off guard all too easily. There's a ton of scripted events that mainly revolve around things blowing up and most of them are just jump scares to push you over the overwhelming tension that the game can deliver, with some of them feeling just a little cheap. With all the things that can kill you in the game, from the alien to the androids to even other humans, the most frightening thing in the game is just the motion sensor beeping, or the save game station staying that there's hostiles nearby. The promise of more. That sinking feeling you get when you know something bad is coming your way. I often found that I was very rarely scared, but constantly stressed out that I was about to make a mistake and die. With manual save points and how daunting some areas are, it really, really makes you not want to do things again. That's two Harry Masons. Sound design. The music in the game is immense in terms of variety and how each piece is tailored to the moment. Not much of it is specifically memorable besides the pieces from the film, but it serves its purpose very well. It's mostly cinematic strings and various ambient tones that provide yet more tension for specific moments. The real star of the show are the sound effects. There are so many great sound effects from the beeping of the motion sensor, to the sound of doors opening, the clicking of the computer hard drives, and evil simple things like the sound of alarms or machines winding up. 
The sound space is incredible, and the sound effects carry the realism of Sevastopol Station almost single-handedly. Everything is really crisp and clear and sounds like it's really happening, it's just so immersive. The directional audio is pretty much perfect too. The voice acting is impressive and convincing, even with Sigourney Weaver appearing for a brief moment to state a final log, which was another piece of great fan service. This game has some of the most impressively done sound design in any of the games I've played. That's three Harry Masons. God, that woman needed help. I didn't know what type of parasite she had encountered, but it had planted something inside her. I am so sorry. I had no way of knowing what would happen. Gore. There's a fair amount of blood and some really grisly bodies, untouched since you arrive, and some of them are a bit spooky, but there's not a lot to say about them. They're realistic for the time and situation you find them in. The deaths are usually from a first person perspective, and seeing the xenomorph's tail burst through Ripley's chest is disturbingly well detailed. The most disturbing bodies are found in the hive section near the end of the game, and seeing them pinned to the wall inside that organic cocoon is just deeply unpleasant. Overall, there is just the right amount of gore for the game and the things that take place. That's for Harry Masons. It's about your mother. We think we may have found her, Amanda. A commercial vessel, the Anisadora, has recovered what we believe to be the flight recorder unit of the Nostromo. Where? Story. Amanda Ripley is drawn to Sevastopol Station to discover what was on the flight recorder of her mother's fateful ship, the Nostromo. Upon arriving, she finds the station has fallen into anarchy, and as usual, the Xenomorph is present on board the ship. The game disregards anything that happened after the original film and continues on as if the sequels never happened. The majority of the plot involves trapping or killing the alien multiple times and fixing various problems across the ship including the murderous androids and imminent failure of the station's systems, but under that is the usual amount of corporate treachery that has plagued the film since the beginning. Things that would be a plot twist for some may not be much of a surprise for people who have seen most of the films since the twist is a fairly typical trope in the series. One of the best parts of the game is the flashback to discovering the alien cave and spaceship from the perspective of a different crew. It's a truly excellent bit of fan service, but also one of the creepiest parts. The characters in the story come off as a bit generic at the start, but some of them definitely stand out later on. There's some interesting and foreboding diary entries in the Sevastopol crew station logs about things after the alien came on board that are definitely worth reading for some excellent backstory. Making the final score 5 out of 5 Harry Masons. Alien Isolation is a great experience, but its main downfall is its length. It's over 10 hours to play the whole thing, and it can wear thin as the game continues to time and time again, come out with new ways to keep going, shifting focus to and from the alien, and it seems that the designers just didn't know when to stop. It's hard to say you can never have too much of a good thing, but it does feel like the game outstays its welcome as it draws closer to the end. However, it does achieve a lot. Again, I'd like to remind you this whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I was pierced through the chest, I certainly did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, and I advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Let's go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.